Next were the toms, and again, to avoid having playback errors while I was working on this song, because it's at 96K, there were a lot of tracks, a lot of plugins going on at one point. I've frozen these tracks, all they had on them were gates. There's nothing super exciting about that. Toms are going to a stereo aux, which I will now unmute, and let's solo up the toms. Really well recorded. They get used a couple of times for fills. In those spots, they need to be very, very loud. And what they had been doing was they had a studio reverb, which I took off, one of the few times I actually got rid of some of their processing. They used the CLA drums plugin, which worked really well. Well, it adds quite a bit of the tone. And I would normally do this with something like Pultec, things like that. And I think I may have actually rerouted back into my Pultec. So this is something that they had used. It's almost scooping them out, which is actually kind of cool. This feeds into this idea of stadium drums. This is much more like toms through a PA as opposed to a natural sounding close mic. I think it's what really makes the drums work on this song in a really interesting way. After that, a little bit of EQ to bring out some attack. Then they had actually added a bit of 100 just to get some more low end. So it's all about this low resonance ringing, but what's great about the way the toms are tuned is it's actually very controlled. There's a beautiful decay to this low end as opposed to it just ringing, which can happen especially in a drum pattern like this. The length of the toms is really cool, and the EQ is what's really helping make that length. From there, the toms are being routed into the tom track from my template, which is adding yet more 100 hertz, just with a different Pultec model, and some 5K. It's really just taking the sound of the toms that they had gotten and going further with it. What this L2 does is it allows me to make the toms louder in the balance of the kit without there being these huge spikes that are then going off to the drum compressors because I don't want the toms to necessarily obliterate the rest of the kit, but they need to be loud, and they've got to cut through the cymbals. So this L2 just sort of keeps them in check while also giving me a place where I can just crank this threshold slider around and get more level out of them without having to just turn them up. It's just a different way to do it. And then I am sending them off to my tom reverb, and so I got rid of their studio verb in place of my reverb, sort of doing the same job, but this is again kind of a stadium reverb. So without the reverb. It's a little bit of that grainy, almost nonlinear ambience, and I'm getting that out of an ambience preset on Revive, and I'm filtering on the way in in case there's some cymbal bleed, and I'm doing a bit of pitch shifting on the way out, and that's what gives it that sort of PA stadium thing as opposed to just a nonlinear reverb. Use this on almost every rock track that I do to varying degrees. It'll be very quiet on a quieter track because I don't want you to hear the pitch shifting, I just want you to get the sense of size. And when we get to the breakdown of the song over here where the toms are really busy, That reverb makes a huge difference in the feel of the kit. Instead of you feeling like you're sort of sitting next to the drummer, you feel like you're in an arena with the drummer, which on this song was absolutely the point. 